the lessons you learn mm -hmm. when there's a crisis. Mm -hmm. You just talked about being laid off. In the last financial crisis, the global financial crisis, I happened to be laid off and I had to go home. And you left home with a job. Mm -hmm. You go home without a job. Then the future becomes blurry. I made a decision that from now going forward, and we were living in a big house in mm -hmm. Princeton, New Jersey, mm -hmm. And within three months, mm -hmm. we couldn't meet our mortgage payment. Now, I made a decision there and then that going forward, we shall never have a lifestyle that we cannot Not sustain sustained. without a job. Wow. Welcome back, and uh, thank you for subscribing. If you haven't, please do. Um, having a conversation with Edwin Dande, the CEO at Saiton, and we're talking about all things COVID, but the thing we don't talk about. So we're very clear, you know, social distance, sanitize your hands, stay healthy, you know, definitely wear your mask, keep your mask on. And then we don't talk about mental health. Mm. And, and before, you know, we went on the break, I said, permission to say, I'm not okay. And giving other people permission to say, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. But how, how do we broach that barrier? Because you told me it's hard for someone to say, hmm, I'm going to see my psychiatrist today. Yeah. How many people leave the office and say, I'm going to see my therapist? Yet it's okay to leave the office and say, I'm, I'm going, going to, to see my, the, dentist. the dentist. Yes. Yet each of them is attending to an important part of the whole. Mm -hmm. And the therapist would be attending almost to the most important part of the whole, the, mm -hmm. the mind and the soul. So I don't know if there is an answer, but my own perspective is it should be okay for leaders to say, mm -hmm. guys, it's going to be hard emotionally in this uh, kind of times. Yes. But somehow when we get to the podium, when leaders get to the podium, they talk about the hardcore stuff, mm -hmm. you know, sanitize, mm -hmm. wash your hands, mask, mm -hmm. but also to remind people, I have a colleague in the office, uh, I've heard her say, mm -hmm. my health is my wealth at this time. Yes, it is. But particularly, mm -hmm. my mental health oh, is my wealth at this yes. time. Because if you observe, uh, we are more irritable. We, we, you can quickly go south in a conversation. So it is People need to, f you have to start with yourself. That is so important. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want you to just take a moment, listen to what Edwin said there. He said, we're more irritable. Have you noticed that you are? Mm -hmm. And also I withdraw quickly. Mm -hmm. The minute I feel, even on WhatsApp groups with friends, the minute I feel, uh, I, I, I withdraw. And, and you get excuses very, if I don't want to do something, I won't. I'll just say, I'm not, I'm meeting not people I'm physically, not, yeah, I'm, I'm not, not you know, yes. don't come to my house, I'm not coming to your house, mm. I don't want the meeting. It is very easy to make an excuse for anything that you want in this. So yes. you have to catch yourself and say, mm. I will not use COVID as an excuse. I will not let COVID <sighs> get me irritable. I think it's to be emotionally aware mm -hmm. that the way I'm behaving now, this is not the usual Edwin. So can you manage Edwin first before you try and go manage your colleagues or before you try and manage family, before you try and manage anything, first manage yourself. And also, yeah. I'm going to stay with that irritable. You know, when the riots broke out, literally in demonstrations worldwide over Black Lives Matter, it wasn't that it was not about the first shooting. No, it wasn't the first killing. It was at this time when people's emotions are on the surface is the wrong time to trigger. <laughs> to trigger, Because yeah. it takes very little to send people over the edge. And that's exactly what George Floyd's death did. Mm. But at the same time, catching myself, because it is true, we're impatient, the trigger is very, very, very short, huh? And it and it's all depends on the day I'm having. If that's the day I woke up, but two days before, somebody I know was buried, yeah. or I heard so and so is unwell, or you know what? Like I know I was very very touchy, the week intercon closed, but you know the whole spectrum. And I was like, how many jobs are those? That, that mm -hmm. it broke me. 
Mm. It broke me. And then, I, and then I get antsy with people who have jobs and they're not looking after them. I get really, really antsy. So you're right. It's yeah. understanding that we're all very, very, I mean, we're touchy. Yeah. And, and if you actually look at it logically, mm. it is not possible to have something that hurts a huge amount of people mm -hmm. economically, mm -hmm. hurts a huge amount of people from a health standpoint, yes. and then fail to hurt them emotionally. Emotionally. So it is clear as a population, as a people, we're hurting emotionally. But there is no forum, there is no, uh, I would say, culture for leaders to go on a point. They wouldn't even know what to say. That it's guys, as, as a nation, as a people, this economic trauma is also, and they'll talk about statistics. You've had uh, Masi, Dr. Mm -hmm. Masi talk mm -hmm. about the number of domestic violence cases has gone up. Yes. But that is a reflection of another issue that we are not talking about. Yes. So they'll talk about it domestically, but even in the workplace, even in the boardroom, yes. people have to catch themselves and say, the same way I'm hurting economically, mm -hmm. the same way I'm, I'm hurting from a health perspective, yes. I'm also hurting emotionally. emotionally, and I have to attend to that. It is uh. the one single thing that people are not paying attention to. Uh. Right? So. Beautiful. Yeah. Which brings me to something else. And therefore, we are called upon to be kinder. A little more patient, a little gentler every day. Absolutely. As yes. A, as an individual, mm -hmm. but there's something you talked about at the beginning. We are the captains of industry. The people who can inspire hope. Mm -hmm. The people who can send the message of stay in play. Mm -hmm. The people who can connect authentically, mm -hmm. there are not many. That's why you see a vacuum. Because if I'm used to talking about we are meeting our revenues, we are meeting our numbers, we are expanding our markets, we, you know, that's what captain of the, captains of industry mm -hmm. are used to doing. Uh -huh. But now you need these people to come. People want, and again, we, nobody will stand up and say, guys, I'm feeling a little hopeless lately. Mm. Can you guys inspire me? Mm -hmm. we, we can't say that. Mm. But that's what people are looking for at the workplace. Who can inspire me that, look, I've taken a 50% pay cut. I, I can't meet my bills. Mm -hmm. But there is a better tomorrow, tomorrow yeah. after COVID. Captains of industry, and I will include myself, uh, mm. in the investment industry and mm. in the real estate industry. Mm -hmm. That's not how we are trained to do. It, Actually, it, it, it no, is work that not. people go to. Mm. It's almost like people work Monday through mm -hmm. Friday, take mm -hmm. a break on Saturday, then go to church to get that message of inspiration. Mm. It's not all that bad. But now even the church is kind of closed. Mm -hmm. So there is nobody to engender hope, to give inspiration, and to feel that void and kind of take away the fear and that to me is the biggest gap so whichever captain of industry wants to really fill the void that has to be the, be the message you know you you've you've called me out and it, it, it and now i have to say this i don't watch a lot of commercial advertising especially if it's on youtube you kind of tend to skip it mm. and i remember a couple of weeks the first time i saw um safaricom's let's keep going and, you know, I was like, who approved this thing? You know, because obviously my media mind checks in. Because one of the lines says, there's things you cannot do anything about. And it's, you know, that's a lot. You, nobody says that. But, but it, it's, it's there in the line. It says, you can do this, you can, but there's this stuff you cannot do anything about. So let's keep going. And I, I think the simplicity of that message is what caught me. And I picked it up and I ran with it. Because I was like, Actually, nobody has been bold enough to say, guys, uh, <laughs> there's only so much we can, we do. can do. So yeah. we can uh, wash our hands, wear the mask, eh, do the right thing. But beyond that, I imagine we've got to keep going, yeah. whatever that looks like. And I, and I liked that. And I have to call myself out for saying, that's the first time I saw something that said, okay. But it's the fact that they owned that line of <laughs> the stuff you can't do anything about. You really can't. You can't. And it is worse when you're in this part of the world. Oh. Because it seems there's a general consensus. That we will wait. You can, we cannot go back 
to where we used to be without a vaccine. Imagine. And you have to look at it and say, and the solution of the vaccine mm -hmm. is not coming from, from here. here. And wherever it's coming from, mm -hmm. they have to sort out their own people first. Mm -hmm. It is just natural. Mm -hmm. So then you have to say, okay, so when you are in Kenya, you are in Africa, and especially, okay, let me put it this way. For me, I'm competitive. I don't believe that there's anything Westerners can do that we can't do if we decide to. Yes. But certainly, however competitive you are, you cannot manufacture a vaccine. No, we can't. So the, you're already feeling hopeless that you've lost your way of life. Mm -hmm. Your in income is reduced. Mm -hmm. You are dealing with uncertainties around health and existence. Mm -hmm. And then what people then have agreed that that is the solution. Mm -hmm. It's you still know removed from me by the reality of where we are. And I, I said this before, and I don't think you ever heard me saying this. I said the reason I maintain that we must do everything in our power to continue to stay safe is that I also know that I'm not just an African, I'm an African woman. I'm also <laughs> further down the totem <laughs> pole. I'm further down the totem pole. So for me, doing the best for me and my family is even not a negotiable. I'm like, whenever you get around to me, fine. Yeah, yeah. But until you do, this is what I'm going to keep this doing. Like, yeah. 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 So, oh gosh, thank you. you. You know you didn't have to do this. No, I didn't. But I was very concerned that I did not want to go into another, another season of having certain conversations, yet you haven't spoken to Saitoners, but actually, let's be honest, we finished with the Saitoners. I think what I have taken is that, let's be honest, we're all hurting emotionally and we're a little testy sometimes, not all the time. Mm. We have to give each other permission to say, I'm not okay today. And we must give the other person per permission to say, actually, si kosawa. Yeah. Okay? Let's stop insisting everybody says in kosawa. Yeah. Okay? And also, Knowing what we know, let's all be a little more patient, kinder, you know, um, gentler with one another. I think what we all need right now is a little more kindness. And, and you called out the captains of industry. I think you also, that, that would be a nice takeaway. I wouldn't, more like challenging captain, captains of industry, yes. step up and provide the inspira inspiration. Yes. Uh, confirm to people that it's it's okay to feel overwhelmed yes. and know that you're overwhelmed and manage yourself mm. in this kind of environment, that is okay. So. And at the same time, and I think mm. there are some people who are afraid to say, we have been okay or we have begun to claw back ground. Um, I do know I saw an article somewhere, um, and these are law firms or, or, or auditing firms who said they have you know, rescinded the pay cuts they gave their people. Mm -hmm. Things like that are necessary. Celebrate it. Because when you put more of that news out, everybody says, okay, okay. Yeah. We're, moving. we're moving. You know, we're moving. If, if, if you come out and say, um, I, I, I need to shout out to Ena Shapai. I remember speaking to Wanjeri and I asked her, how are you doing? How's everybody? Um, is so and so still there? She said, I kept all my people. Wow. You know, and there's a lot of organizations who tell you, no, 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 we didn't let anybody go. We kept our people. Those captains must say, yes, we bit the bullet. I think James Mwangi told all of us, <laughs> yeah. older, I don't know dividend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm keeping my people and I am not, you know, cutting their pay. But that's a positive message. That's positive. We need to hear it. It, it was brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I remember the dividend was <laughs> 9 billion total yeah, that he did pay. He did pay. When he reported his numbers, yes. his um, provisions mm -hmm. for bad loans was yes. eight billion. Yes. I was like, "Oh, this oh. guy knew where he knew he needed where the he guy. needed the money." <laughs> yeah. But he was like, "There shall be no dividend." Yeah. But I'm sure if you ask him, he says, "I've kept my people. I am not recalling anybody's loan. I'm not doing this." And that's what I want to hear. Yeah, the I, positive message. That's what I because we need it. Yeah. It's not. It's not a brag. It's not. It's. It's the sort of thing that you hear one of those a day, one, and it lifts you up at ten paces. I, I, like I, 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 without a doubt, the day I heard about Intercon, I, I crashed. Yeah. I crashed. I crashed emotionally. I was torn. I was like, what? 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 
Because when you think about it, even when you send a thousand people home, do people realize it's not a thousand people? Yeah, it is times four. Times four. It's four thousand live immediate. Immediately. Yeah. I crashed. Mm. I, I and here other than me telling you this, this mm. is the first time anybody's gonna know about it. Because how do you tell another person that you're emotionally drained because something happened to somebody to else, else who you do not know? Yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, it just triggers another thought in terms of the the lessons you learn mm -hmm. when there's a crisis. Mm -hmm. You just talked about being laid off. In the last financial crisis, the global financial crisis, I happened to be laid off and I had to go home. And you left home with a job. Mm -hmm. You go home without a job. Then the future becomes blurry. I made a decision that from now going forward, and we were living in an big house in mm -hmm. Princeton, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And within three months, mm -hmm. we couldn't meet our mortgage payment. Now, I made a decision there and then that going forward, we shall never have a lifestyle that we cannot Not sustain sustained. without a job. Wow. Now, I told you that I had to restructure a mortgage, but mm -hmm. it's for a, rent a rented property. Mm -hmm. This particular fund, and you know, people look at executives, you know, senior mm -hmm. managers, and, and they think you have a different lifestyle. You, you, you are just as mortgage, you just have as many commitments yes. as the other person. Yes. But when this crisis hit, I told myself, at least I'm dealing, I'm dealing with a new skill set in terms mm -hmm. of how do you manage the organization through a crisis. Mm -hmm. My lessons on how do you position came yourself from your came from my previous crisis. So people might not see it, but if you are attentive, you will learn some lessons that will prepare you for the next crisis mm -hmm. better than somebody who will not have gone through this. When I see some of the things people go through in mm -hmm. terms of their personal family income, ability to pay rent and food, mm -hmm. for people who could have fixed it had they known this mm -hmm. was coming, but they never saw it coming. Mm -hmm. So having gone through the last financial crisis, I was personally at an individual and family level more prepared the message is not about me. The message is people should realize mm -hmm. you can learn a lot of lessons in this difficult moment that yes. will give you skill sets that prepare you for the future much better than people who will not have gone mm -hmm. through this. Yeah. So it's very hard to kind of articulate, but you are learning no, a skill set it. that positions you in a much better place. And we will come through this. Absolutely. We, we will. To. But I think once again, if you take nothing else from this, and I think somebody um, commented the other day in one of my videos, because I start off with, are you well? And they say they nod. And, and, and I mean <laughs> it. It's not because for me is, are you well? Are you okay? Is that we are all not okay. Okay. Yeah. And it's okay. And it's okay. And it's okay. And it's okay. Said, yeah. But because we know this, can we also all be a little more sensitive? Yeah. Good takeout. Saitaneers, you're lucky you've got this guy because I was never going to have this conversation with anybody else. To the captains of industry who are squint-eyeing me, whenever you're ready, Edwin will vacate this chair. <laughs> he will, and whenever you're ready. But I need to hear the soldiering on conversation. Yeah, we've done the woo and cry for long enough. We have no choice. We have to soldier on. That's yeah. the truth. Thank you. Thanks, Caroline. Thank you so much.